good after morning to you all. <laughs> I am taking it slow. We are having a giddy up lazy day today, okay? It is 12.39 p.m. I decided to like kind of lay down ish. And I say ish because I didn't sleep or anything. I just literally laid in bed because I was like, I am tired and I didn't want to do anything. So I didn't and I just laid in bed and said and it was great. Also check out my hat. I got it specifically for summer ween. Um, but yeah, I did upload my vlog. I'm literally currently watering a plant. <laughs> um, I did get comments on this plant that's next to my window. There's something else going on with this plant. It's not just thirsty. There's something else wrong because I have been watering it just like normal. I think I need to repot it and just give it some fresh soil because it's a prayer plant. So it like spreads out and then goes up at night. So when I recorded that rain bit, it was at night. So it was up more, but you're not here for plant talk. Plant talk? This isn't even TikTok. Oh dear. Anyways, let's talk about books. I finished a book. I finished Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I think this is going to be a four star for me. Um, so what I really liked in this was that it's basically a slasher book. I have yet to read a horror slash thriller that is a slasher. And I'm really excited that I have now found one. Of course, if anyone was going to do it, it's going to be Grady Hendrix because, you know, they are a fave of mine. There is something that I'm, like, kind of torn on, but it's a spoiler. So if you are look if you like 80s slashers, if you like when books make references to pop culture, specifically pretty much all 80s, early 90s pop culture, and it's a little scary. It's not horror in the sense of, like, I was really that freaked out for the majority of the book. There were some scenes. Like, I had to make sure that I ended on a scene that was not super creepy because some of it was pretty, some of it was pretty creepy. But for the majority of it, I would not say this is the scariest book by Grady Hendrix. I think that that is still going to be the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires for me. Just because that genuinely freaked me the hell out. But um, I'm going to put spoilers big on the screen so that you know that there are spoilers. You can just skip to where you don't see that giant word anymore. But uh, let's, let's talk spoilers, shall we? So... I'm really not going to talk that many spoilers, it's just one particular thing. So when it comes to the reveal of who the killer is, I won't say who it is, I enjoyed it, I really liked it. However, another topic came up and this happened in another thriller that I read recently where it is the topic of like men's rights movement, anti-feminism movement, and just things like that. Which, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. And it, both of these books that I've read that bring this up are men. So I think that it would be interesting to see how they discuss that and what they kind of critique on that in a book such as horrors or thrillers. Because I am of the mindset that a horror book needs to have some kind of commentary. So that's why I think of When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole as a horror because the pacing is more fitting of a horror. It's not a thriller to me. I don't pitch it as one. But the pacing and then the social commentary on things like gentrification and the fact that this entire country's infrastructure is built, woven in with racism. To me that deems it a horror because there's there's a conversation underlying all of the gore and the terror and all of that like there is symbolism in it is what i mean and when you have the southern book club's guide to saying vampires again it's another thing for social classes for the gap between the wealthy and the not and then also how police treat specific groups of people and racism as well and so like those books discuss and even as far back as like to dracula who discusses the fear that europeans had of reverse colonization because they knew what they did was bad and they did not want it done to them all of these are horror because there are those conversations being had just underneath the surface of all the horrific elements. And this one torn because one thing I would have liked to see more of the conversation about 
the men's rights movements from a male specifically a male horror author's point of view but also there was a comment in there I really liked where one of the characters noted that she did not enjoy the movie franchises of their murders because they did not focus on the victims at all. The victims were objects, not the subjects. The subjects of people with autonomy were the killers, which when you put it that way, then I'm like, well then yeah, we don't want to go into that movement and talk and critique it because maybe the big overall topic that we're talking about in this book is how people glorify serial killers versus shed light to the victims who they were who they could have been and what was taken from them and how awful it is so that's just like my thing that I have right now I'm excited to see what other people say I'm excited to see other people read it so I can see what they think again this always makes me wish that I was still taking gothic literature classes and horror classes in college because I would read these books and we this is just all we would talk about in those classes which is why I want to get my master's in all of that, but man, why is education so dang expensive? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. But aside from that, I am going to go bake a second round of coffee, and I may pick up a graphic novel or two. We'll see. My battery is flashing, so I need to change that, but yeah, we're going to go, we're going to go do that now and just chill out in bed. That sounds nice to me. Sounds like a good time. Let's just chill out and read. How about... How about that? Hi guys, so I've been just chilling in bed because I am not honestly feeling the greatest. I'm having a pretty bad headache. Let's see if I can figure out why. Alexa, is it gonna rain today? It's kind of cloudy outside. It might rain today. There's a 51% chance at 3 p.m. Oh, it's in nine minutes. You know what? That's probably why my head has been hurting for about two-ish hours now. It's been hurting on and off for two days, but it's been raining on and off like all week, so look at that. I am truly an old woman. I can tell when my head's gonna hurt or when it's gonna rain by my head hurting or my hips or my knees or any joint really because, but I just finished first grave on the right and it was fun. I ended up giving it probably I think it's mainly a like a two-star read for me. Let me preface that by saying it was fun. I liked the main character all right. I thought she was really funny and I liked the quick wit. It, the main character in this reminds me a lot of the one in the Jana De Leon series that I really liked. 
um, and that I'm currently working my way through. So I think that's why I liked it a lot. However, in the first part of the book, there is a weird, a salty scene. I don't really know why it was even in there to begin with. And if I'm remembering it correctly, that was with this supposed love interest of this entire book. So like, I'm just a little confused as to why that was even there. And if because it happened so early in the book, people kind of forgot it. Because I forgot it until I was like, there's just something I didn't love about this when I finished the audiobook. And I went to Goodreads and I looked at the reviews and I had already put the two star down. I mean, I accidentally, <laughs> in the B-roll I hit three by accident, uh, but it's it's two for me. Um, but two's about halfway. So like, it was funny, but there really wasn't a lot of plot to it. And I stand by this is like a good, probably a little more urban fantasy leaning, cozy-ish book. It's not a cozy mystery, but it's like a cozy book like True Blood is. And I still enjoyed it, but it's just not probably for me. I did like, there's just not a lot of plot, I guess. And I like in cozy mystery specifically, there's so much of a, like, a plot. There's a mystery. And I like that the plot changes in each book, but the relationships develop throughout all of the series. So, like, if you were to start at book six, you wouldn't be confused, but you would have missed books one through five's, like, character development. And I'm specifically thinking of the Misfortune series of cozies. But, yeah, I, um... I'm glad that I read it because I think that it helps me hone in on what I like more and I so I like premise of this I like the idea of this I think I would enjoy trying out some paranormal cozy mysteries but for the most part I just I think I want more plot heavy versus romance heavy and I think this is more romance heavy then plot heavy despite that I don't know that that scene at the beginning really made me like hello I don't know why I'm so like stuck on that but I am um but yeah but yeah that's that's what I finished and now that I'm having kind of like a bad time up here I am thinking that these are gonna be what I spend my afternoon doing and then after dinner I think I'm going to start the burning girls which is the it was the read the book in the dark but I think it could still count as horror because it's like involving a freaking exorcism and that's not exactly a fun Saturday afternoon activity unless you're Ed and Lorraine Warren. But uh, I think that's what I will start. I may even start a chapter of that after I finish this clip just to see how I'm feeling with it. But uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely feeling lazy today. I am excited to just read some of these like cute more cozy things for the moment and then get into uh demons again naturally but let's let's see so i've now finished in total three books Coraline, first grave on the right final girl support group doing good doing good i would like to read these two graphic novels as well and then the burning girls i don't think i'm gonna get firekeeper's daughter done because i don't want to rush through it because i'm like seriously seriously enjoying this and i want to i do this thing that i think is probably really nerdy but i like to finish a book and then go watch all the booktubers that i subscribe to who have read it and watch either their wrap-up section about it or if they have a dedicated vlog or video and just see all their thoughts on it it's just one of my favorite things it's why sometimes i will read books that i would have never read before because for example books like whoa when Mara will do a standalone review or a wrap up or a video, just basically reviewing a book at all, I love her review so much that I will go and read that book just so I can see. Even if it's like not particularly my cup of tea, typically I'll like it enough, you know? So I might go look for a few of those. Don't know what my hand is doing. Also, I did take all my nails off because I was just feeling like I need to take these freaking nails off, okay. But uh, yeah, I do. 
I do need to probably like sit down and plan in my bullet journal for a little bit. I probably need to map out the rest of this week because I have to go back up to the school at the end of the week to get my new work laptop, which means that pretty much school is officially a thing again. Cue the sad music and rain. This is a very short summer for me. We got out like the second. So the third week of June was our first week of summer and then we are back in full swing last week of July. Sucks. <laughs> but it'll be different next year, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, I'm gonna go and I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Meh. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Right. With you and I, the future is bright.